Hello, welcome to Bitter Feminist Podcast, the podcast where we talk about feminist issues from the perspective of an African woman living in Africa. I am your resident Bitter Feminist host, Ijoma. I'm very excited about this episode. I know I say I'm always excited about all our previous episodes, but this one is special because this episode is 100% about you. A couple of months ago, my producer had this amazing idea for me to create a Google form and send it out for people, our listeners, to send in questions, feminist related questions. And we did just that. And we had so many questions, which we're going to talk about and answer today. It took us this long because our initial plan was to answer two questions per episode but the questions we got were so many that if we decided to answer two questions per episode we might not finish them before the end of the year so we decided to instead create an episode or two episodes or three episodes as the case may be which are 100 percent dedicated to answering these questions we want to tackle them deeply give in-depth answers and real life examples if need be so that is what we'll be doing today we're going to answer some of the questions you guys sent in and i'm very excited one of the reasons i'm excited is the question people really came through with really tough feminist questions this is not the normal aov what do i do my boyfriend is beating me or aov my boyfriend does not flush toilet kind of questions these are really tough feminist questions that are insightful that are deep that are actually tough i had to ask my producer i had to ask some of my feminist friends for help and we answered a lot of these questions so you're going to get really insightful questions and really well thought out responses so let's go These questions were sent in anonymously, so I do not know who sent them in. You have to listen to know if we're answering your own question particularly. Our first question, what do you think about stay-at-home moms? A woman that just feels like staying at home and taking care of her family. Being a stay-at-home mom or deciding to be a stay-at-home mom is very valid. It is very honorable, you know, giving up working and earning a living. However, you have to understand the kind of partner you have, the kind of husband you have before you venture into something like this. Does he understand that being a stay-at-home mom is not just you leisurely lying around in the house? Does he understand how difficult it is to sacrifice your livelihood just to be at home with your kids? Does he understand that it's not fun for you? Does he understand that he needs to place you on a salary or financially compensate you? Are you comfortable with having everything you make come from a man? You are not working. You're just going to be home taking care of kids. How are you going to take care of your needs? How are you going to take care of your parents? That's if your parents are still alive, your siblings. We, we know how it is here in Africa. How are you going to take care of your primary needs? If you want to buy a pad, if you want to buy a dress, how are you going to provide for your kids? Does he take that into advisement? Is it placing you on some financial compensation? So these are things you have to worry about. And these are things you have to discuss with him. The things he's doing, the strides he's making at his workplace, the money he's making, the properties he's buying. Is he buying it for both of you? Or is he buying it for himself and saying, you're not contributing anything, you're not bringing anything to the table. Can he defend you to his family when they say you're jobless and you're just lying at home getting fat? These are the issues and again i'll ask are you comfortable having your financial source be a man relying on a man 100 percent for your finances are you okay with it will he still be a good man or a kind man 20 years from now if anything should happen to you if he should die what happens to you then these are the questions so many tough questions you have to ask yourself and you have to ask your partner and you have to decide the answers to those questions before you now say okay let me be a stay-at-home mother because a lot of the stay-at-home mothers we have in nigeria most of them cannot buy rapper for themselves 
most of them their husbands don't see what they do as important they're like eh -huh. after all my own mother my grandmother had 12 of us uh, the 12 of the uh, 12 children and was able to go to farm and this is this and this is, oh you're just lazy most of these men buy properties in their own names they don't see what their women do as important so these are the things you have to understand and you have to be on the same page with your partner are you getting financial compensation how are you getting your money where are you getting your money from is it when you need to buy a pad you run to him there's so many things that you have to answer and discuss before you can consider being a stay-at-home mom and if he does not see what you do as a sacrifice he does not think it's important then there's no need for you to be a stay-at-home mom before you wake up 20 years from now and uh, your man will throw you out of the house or maybe if anything happens to him you're back to square one you don't have anything we have so many stories of rich madams married to rich men and when something happens to the man the madam goes back to square one if you're on the same page with your man then by all means you can consider being a stay-at-home mom but if you're not if you're not getting any compensation if you're not getting the things that you're supposed to get when you're a stay-at-home mom you should not lack you should still be getting financial compensation that you would have gotten if you were working no matter how little so if you're going to do this sacrifice your entire life the person you're doing it with doesn't appreciate what you're doing then there's no need to do it does he understand that you're doing this forever there's nothing like bricks motherhood doesn't come with bricks there's nothing like leave there's nothing like you know it's a very very deep topic that you need to have with the person you're doing this life with and if you're not on the same page then i wouldn't advise you do it so that's question number one let's go to question number two um this is a little bit funny why do men always greet other men first before greeting women even if they don't know the other guy but they know the woman personally they always do this this is simple and at the same time um, funny but the only reason why a man would ignore you even if he knows you and go to greet the man first is because obviously men do not see women as equal a man who knows you would rather greet a strange man instead than greet you later as an afterthought because men do not consider women whether they are strange or familiar equal a man would almost 100 percent pick a man over a woman whether the man knows the man or not it's just the thing it's just the way it is men by their nature consider themselves superior to women simple another question she says feminism and christianity People opine that you can't be feminist and be a Christian. I am both, though, and I don't care what anyone says, but I want you to please address it critically. Make I really understand and use your points. They tackle people where they abuse me. LOL. And first of all, I'm going to say, why do you care if people abuse you for being a feminist and being a Christian at the same time? People fornicate and are Christians or Muslims or African traditional practitioners and all these are religions that do not support premarital sex but you don't see them coming to ask what points do i need to use to defend this it is what it is you don't need to defend it to anybody people have made a, a practice of cherry picking what part of their religions that suit them we have muslims that drink alcohol we have christians who fornicate and these are just you know the main parts of the law there are people who lie steal do all those things and they cling tightly to their religion so you you're not doing anything wrong by being a feminist you're not offending anybody it's just a principle in which you're leading your life why do you feel the need to defend it you're not hurting anybody anyway to your question obviously yes you can be a feminist and be a christian you can be a feminist and be a muslim you can be a feminist and be a buddhist you can be a feminist and worship your tv you can be a feminist and worship your rock where the problem might start is if your religion and your feminist principles clash if there is a clash between your religion and your feminist principle which one would have to go down for the other that is it that is the most important thing i think i'm going to have to tackle feminism and christianity on a totally different uh, podcast episode but i think i've made a post about this on facebook if you follow me you should have seen the post and i gave so many instances about how the christian law and the christian you know doctrine and everything the bible we have so many instances that you know that it was very misogynistic and everything but jesus christ whom christianity is based on has plenty places where he stood up for women where he acknowledged women so you might have to go and find that post and read up on it so that's it for that
the next question is okay this question has three parts asking girls who have committed abortions to step out in church for forgiveness did they impregnate themselves girl children forced to accept and forgive their abusive parents yet i'm yet to hear a male child browbeaten to do such why are female children forced to care for the entire family even terminally ill parents yet given little or nothing by way of inheritance at the demise of the parents the society views women as inferior that's all the three questions are different but they all have the same answer the society the church everybody from the family which is the smallest unit of the society to the church to the mosque to the shrines to everywhere to schools marketplaces they view women as inferior that is why they would ask girls who committed abortion to step out in church nobody cares about men who's who has had abortions done for them or men who have given money to women for abortion to come out for prayers for forgiveness nobody does that apart from abortion which you know the society views as the worst sin a woman can commit we have men who are murderers kidnappers thieves fraud stars 419ers yahoo boys ritualists scammers no pastor will ever open his mouth and say if you know you're a scammer come out let me pray for you there are other crimes there are other you know horrible things people do other sins let's even put it as sins people commit men commit nobody ever asks men to come out so that they will be prayed for and they'll be forgiven it never happens it's only sins women commit it's only for women that they do all those ones. They will ask, hey, you know, you're a woman, you are fornicating, come out. You've committed abortion, come out for, for cleansing, for prayers. No. The society considers women as inferior. Men can do all these things and nobody bats an eyelid. Nobody calls them for cleansing, for this, for that, or, or to shame them. Because at the depth of this is shame. If it's forgiveness that you really want to give bestow on these people, you can ask them to meet you in private or you don't have to say it in church for everybody to see but at the core of this is shaming the woman men are the superior gender nobody shames them i've been to churches where they'll say stuff like if you know you've done this thing as a man come and meet me after the service it's done you know hush hush the society the church the family they know they rate women they consider us as inferior and they want to shame us then number two girl children forced to accept and forgive their abusive parents again because say it with me <laughs> the society no rates women women are considered inferior that is why they'll force you to go and make peace with your deadbeat father there are communities that won't no matter how deadbeat your father is they won't allow you to get married they won't allow you to get married according to their customs unless you go and meet that your father he's the one that is supposed to hand you over and men capitalize on this to become deadbeat fathers too you know they'll be like eh, when she's ready she'll come and find me we saw it happen with Ngozi Ezono's um, daughter same thing with uh, Regina. It's a thing. But once it's a man, once a man says, this man was useless, he wasn't there when I, I needed him, I don't want anything to do with him, they respect his decision. They respect it. Nobody tries to, like he said, nobody tries to, you know, force him. The society demands leniency from women. They demand understanding. They place women on a higher moral standard than they do men. They also don't think a woman can say something I mean it. Who gives you that audacity? What will give you as a woman audacity to say no that you don't want to see your father and mean it? Come on, go and you can't beg the man no jerry. So <laughs> it all boils down, you know, to them not rating women and uh, you know, not considering them people enough to make such decisions and stick by them. Then the last question, why are female children forced to care for the entire family, even terminally ill parents, yet given little or nothing by way of inheritance at the demise of the parents? Same answer, women are expected to be the morally upright gender. When you go to the hospital, big hospitals, federal hospitals, teaching hospitals, you're going to see more of women there taking care of men taking care of not just men taking care of the patients a woman might have seven sons and one daughter guess who would be by her bedside that one daughter the most the the sons would do is to send money it's the woman that would take leave from her job come down to the hospital a son would rather send his wife to take care of his mother than go himself women are expected to be the better people automatically you know just because you have a vagina you have to be more compassionate you have to be a better person you have to take care of the entire family sometimes people that are not even related to you sometimes people that don't even like you 
you have to leave your job, leave your responsibilities and go do this. But when these people die, you do not inherit anything. By right, the inheritance of uh, lands, tangible properties go to men. What the woman might inherit, Arapa, George, Ntoreka, High Target, Holandis, Ashoki, shoes, slippers, bags. They are useless when compared to what men actually inherit. Men inherit lands, buildings, economical trees. By default, the um, deceased person doesn't even need to write a will. This things go to the men. Why? Why is that? Because women are considered inferior to men. That's why we get nothing, but we're expected to do everything. Once you understand that this is how the society views you, you start making changes in your family. The family is the smallest unit of the society. So you can start making these changes from your own family. My mother was the first child. I use was because she's dead now, but she was the first child of seven children. Yet, when she lost her mother, when her, her own mom died, she did not inherit anything. Her mom had palm trees, farmlands, a lot of lands and everything. The girls didn't get any of that. The girls just got rapa, ntoreka, ibwe, that's chests. The men got the trees, the lands, the houses, this, that, so many good things. But my mother, the first child, the one that trained some of her siblings, the one that did everything, didn't get anything and she was okay with it. What did she do? She bought lands for herself and she made sure myself and my sister inherited it. She changed that tradition. She stopped it in her own lineage. Yes, she was not allowed to inherit anything, but she made sure her own daughters inherited. That's all for today. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Bitter Feminist Podcast. Follow us at Bitter Feminist Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. You can drop your contributions, questions, or even hot takes on any of our social media platforms. I'm still your host, Ijama. See you on our next episode. Bye.